Dearly beloved of God, praise the Lord. And God is good. And all the time, God is good. Let us pray as we go into the word of God. Father God in heaven, thank you for this opportunity of prayer that you bless us as we read this word and think through together in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, you are welcome. And we thank God, our Father who is in heaven, Hallowed be his name, his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And may he give us today our daily bread. Friends, we thank God who is our father and who is exalted high in heaven. We are at his footsteps down. We sit at, at our father's feet, realizing his graces, feeling his favor, feeling his love, feeling his care. And so this time, we continue with his word that he has purposed that we should read, energize ourselves with it, internalize for our living here on earth, but also as we prepare for the heaven, because time will come when we shall be no more. And when we are no more here, we should be somewhere else, and that is the place that our Lord Jesus Christ promised to God prepare. But while we are here, we need to be living purposefully. We need to be living as a people that are of value first to ourselves, yes, and then of value to others. And then, more importantly, valuable in the presence of God. Now, Let's get back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the prophet, one of the personalities in the Bible, one of the major prophets that God chose to speak his word. Remember, we have talked about several things about Ezekiel and a few other things to continue speaking about him. We have spoken about his general message to the people of Israel who were already in exile. And now we also talked about individual responsibility that he talked about in chapter 18, giving us responsibility to take care of ourselves. And so that as we take care of ourselves, we will, of course, actually we have to mind, be mindful that what we do counts later. What we do now will either give you life or will also bring you something that's not right, that's not good, that's not palatable. And so individual responsibility was spoken about Prophet Ezekiel. And now, I have been compelled to speak about what he mentions about watchmen being shepherds of God's people. Prophet Ezekiel brings it out very, very, very clearly. No, he brought it out for the people of Israel at that time because God appointed him, and we're going to read some passages here. As he spoke to them, he also speaks to us. Because we have leaders, we have shepherds, we have people that take care of others. And so let us get into the Bible. Ezekiel chapter 3. And this, we are going to just pick a few portions because the time may not allow to go into everything. And this is Ezekiel chapter 3, beginning Let's read three verses, verses 6 to 9. And then we shall dive into chapter 33. And then pick a few verses, and then we shall pick our own lessons. I pick my lessons that will enable me. And the lessons I'm going to share, you also pick yours. That's going to help you live your life responsibly among your people. And pray the Lord for that so that you live your life responsibly, caringly among the people that you live with. And so in chapter 3, verses 16 to 19, a watchman for Israel. And at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them 
warning from me. If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to, to warn the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. Verse 19. But if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness and from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity. But you will have delivered your soul. Praise the Lord. You can read on because the words are here in written and it speaks about what I've just mentioned, being a watchman, living among the people. Ezekiel was living among the exiles while they were there and God chose him to speak even while they were in devastation, even while they were in a hopeless situation, he delivered a message to him that now this is the message I have appointed you. Praise the Lord. And when God appoints, he equips. When God appoints, he equips. And so here, the message that Ezekiel takes to the people is not his message. He is given the message. And so he's told, actually, as you go, a wicked person pronounce, announce, and if that person agrees to change, then he has less saved his life and you will have actually recovered your brother or your sister, pray the Lord. And he says that if he does not, this person, if he does not, he will die for his sins or her sins. Now, what do you do? God was telling Ezekiel that go and pronounce. But if you don't, if you don't, then when this person dies in sin, in iniquity, in trouble, then the blood of this person will be counted on your head. So in this chapter 3, it talks about watchmen from verse 16 following. But also let us read Ezekiel chapter 33, just a few verses or so. 33, we read verses 7 to 11. And this is what he says again. He so saw you, son of man. I have made a, watch, have made a watchman for the house of Israel. The same words. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way. That wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will, will I require at your hand. And verse 9, but if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. Remember the same words that I've just been reading chapter 3? God repeats them to Ezekiel in chapter 33. You will have delivered your soul. Now, you read on and you discover that there is a lot that your God is requiring of a watchman. And so Ezekiel, friends, was called to be a watchman. And this particular calling was not a simple one. This particular watchmanship was not easy. Because first of all, look at the situation in which Ezekiel is speaking. He speaks in a situation that is hopeless. He speaks in a situation of not their own because they're not at home, they're in exile. And you know the life of suffering, a life of a country which is not yours, a life of a situation where you feel not at home. And now God appoints Ezekiel to go and keep watch. 
It's really a difficult task. Now, he tells them, he tells him to warn them about the consequences of being disobedient. And this has been, this is a theme that actually carried through the Bible. Consequences of disobedience. And I hardly remember Isaiah chapter 1, which we ever talked about at one time. And it is in the Bible, Isaiah 1, 18, 19, when God invites, come and we reason together. And at the same time, he says, but if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And then he says, that, but if you are disobedient, you'll be devoured by the sword. And this is the very reason why these people had been carried into exile. And so these consequences of disobedience. And so he's appointed to go and keep warning and warning at all the time about the impending judgment that will come on the disobedient. And they're already testing it in the foreign land. So Ezekiel was responsible for giving the message as it was, the message of warning. And even us at our time, we are not meant to carry our own message. We are meant to carry God's message. A pastor, a preacher, an evangelist, a, 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 a reverend, whoever, bishop, whoever, the message that is carried, the message that we are meant to deliver is not our message. Now, we are responsible for our part. We who are in this ministry, and you will discover that actually it does not only stop at those that are in religious circles, religious leaders, spiritual leaders. But this responsibility of watchmanship is carried down on anybody with a responsibility in your situation, in your environment. How about parents? Yes, parents are also watchful people. They must be watchmen over their own home. And are you a manager? Are you? That is your jurisdiction. You have to deliver. You have to take lead. So Ezekiel was given the role of a watchman. And just like us, in our various callings, in our various vocations, God requires us to be responsible for those for whom he has called us, for whom he has called us to deliver the message. And so it's a duty to cry out the message in the face of danger. He would be innocent. If he carried it, if he cried it out and people did not listen. But he would not be innocent if he, he had, he knew, but he could not pronounce it. So not crying out, therefore, as a watchman, the person would be held responsible. So this calls for what? This is what it calls for. It calls for faithful performance of the task faithful performance of the task that God has given us. And it has always been at my heart to always think and consider delivering my task, performing my task. Everyone is called upon to perform their task. You are called upon to perform your task according to the equipment. Because I said at the beginning that actually when God calls you, he equips you. So we are called upon to be faithful performers. We are called upon to faithfully perform our role. So may God help you to perform your role. A watchman, a watch person must first hear from the source. Hear the message from God. Hear God's message and deliver it the way it has come. Not your own. Because when there is a temptation. Oh, remember. I think we have also talked about falsehoods, false prophets, false preachers, the people that receive the message, but they twist it to fit themselves for their own goodness. But here Ezekiel was called to deliver the message as was. Pray the Lord. And so we pick something here. That as people that have been given a responsibility, first, we need to hear. Second, we need to speak. One, hear. Two, speak out. Not because not just to speak before you hear. There are some people who speak before they hear. 
But the order is here first because there must be a source, a credible source of the information that you want to. And actually many, many people suffer in our situation in, during our times because they don't want to hear well. The reason why you, we hear rumors, a rumor, someone actually brings unfounded information. Something that is unfounded and our generation is soiled by wickedness of unfounded information. Now, first get this from the credible source and then you speak it out. Now, here Ezekiel as a watch person, as a watchman, was called upon to listen and then deliver the message. So pray the Lord that actually this is speaking frustration as well. So that we hear first, get the information from wherever is the credible source. Is it a document? Is it a policy? Is it first get first hand information before it is delivered? So Ezekiel, a prophet, a watchman, a spokesperson, was delivered this message as it was. So the, the a few lessons that actually we pick, like I've already mentioned, watchmen are watchful in the safety and the security of their cities, of their nations, of their families. As a pastor, as a vicar, as a parish priest, as a bishop, as whoever, that is your area to ensure safety and security of your people. It is still vital for us. And I was thinking through, and I said, yes, God still appoints us as a responsible vessels in our own times. I have already mentioned something about parents. As parents, God has appointed you. You, daddy, you, mommy, God has appointed you as a watchman of your family. A watchman. We are now using the term watchman. Whoever you are, whether female or male, you are a watchman of your family. Now you stand as a gatekeeper of your children's hearts, of your children's future. Because until you realize this, that you're a gatekeeper for your children, you're a gatekeeper for your home, you're a gatekeeper for your family, because you provide a person, then you'll deliver your service. Until you know it, you'll deliver your service according to what God has put it. So we need to be vigilant. A watchman according to Ezekiel 3 and Ezekiel 33, was meant to be vigilant, knowing what to look out for and where to look for it. Know what to look for and know where to look for it. This is actually important for me and it's also important for you for the purposes of being relevant in our situation. And I pray that actually God will enable us to be relevant as parents, to be relevant as church leaders, to be relevant as pastors, to be relevant as managers, to be relevant in a, your environment. Be relevant. Ezekiel was called upon to be relevant even when he was in exile with the team, with the people. He was lifted. Pray the Lord. And may God carry you up so that you'll be relevant. You'll be a hope bringer to them. You want them for the wrong that they have done, but also want them to save them from the troubles if someone is not doing well, correct the situation. Someone who is under you, be a person with a heart to correct, to enable the person to perform better in the name of the Lord. So it is our duty, friends, to watch. It's our duty to protect. And so it's our duty to take care of something that's under us. So we need to listen from the source and what is God speaking, what is God saying. So a watchman would be focused outward. This, I found this actually very interesting, by the way, being focused outward. See whether the enemy is advancing. See whether the enemy is advancing, constantly being vigilant, never sleeping at your watch, you know, never growing tired, never dis being distracted, never being disinterested, never sleep sleeping on your duty. Pray the Lord. I have heard people use terminologies these days that someone slept on his job and something wrong went about. Pray the Lord. Now I am praying that I will not sleep on my job. Being vigilant. And then you'll find some people fully disinterested in their, in their duty. You'll find someone 
fully distracted and being distracted is actually being overtaken by what is unnecessary so the unnecessaries at our work are too many unnecessaries in our homes also are too many so Ezekiel is called upon to be watchful to be vigilant to be caring of the situation in which he was and so in this is very very important as a watch person as a watchman you're a soldier at war protecting the people protecting the people that are under you the defender praise the lord as a father as a parent the defender you prove security friends as a member of a family those of us that are out here and our parents are somewhere we are their security and they are our security as well and so we are defenders parents pastors clergy whoever you are guarding the entrance because at the gates there are many many things that have come in many wrongs have come in into our generation we need to liven we need to get up to the situation ezekiel was called upon if evil is evil we pronounce it we name it evil but now these days we're overtaken and we regret that god will forgive us as leaders people now call bad to be good people now call evil to be good and good to be bad because actually if someone came out outspoken about the evils in society then you'll be reprimanded you'll be taken bad you'll be hit at you'll be ridiculed you'll be so you become an odd person when you stick to what is right but we pray that actually god who raised ezekiel who raised us who raised you who raised each one of us calling upon us to warn about the spiritual dangers that we're having physical dangers that we're having social dangers that we're having emotional dangers that are facing intellectual dangers everything that is may god enable us to be watchful like Ezekiel was this is the point so we convey the message completely and accurately listen to me completely and accurately and in a timely manner this is important and so finally Paul puts it to the Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 he tells them be watchful and strong my brother, my sister, be watchful and strong at your work, at your place, in your situation. Be watchful and strong. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, the writer still also mentions, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful, pray the Lord. Ezekiel leaves me a message. Ezekiel leaves here a message that actually in your environment in your situation being relevant being watchful being timely being accurate and being complete pray the lord being complete daddy mommy brother son daughter being complete being accurate and being watchful and then the final one first peter 5 8 peter mentions be sober. Be sober minded. Be watchful. So my brother, my sister, may God who called you give you the grace. May God who called me give me the grace to be watchful. Evil is evil. One. Good is good. Encourage. And so that our society will be back online. And God is looking for men and women who are Ezekiel type so that he will do his work through us. May you be the one. May I be the one to be a watchman in our situation, to be a watchman in our times, to be a watchman in our home, to be a watchman at our workplace, place so that the things will move according to what God requires. And may God bless you and watch over you as he watches over me as well. And so that we shall be alive to be in this land of the living to enjoy God's goodness as we deliver his word 
for goodness sake and for God's own, you know, purity and holiness. May God bless you and watch over you. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>